Good morning, everyone. Welcome to chapel this morning. I'm very excited because uh, we get to do something that actually hasn't happened at Holy Cross in a very long time. We get to have an entire school chapel. Uh, based on some of the feedback we got last week from how things worked out with doing um, virtual chapel here on our YouTube channel, we realized that it would have worked a lot better uh, to just have one single chapel to put together. And that's because we realized that a lot of you uh, families that have students in multiple grade levels at the elementary school and the middle school and the high school, um, a lot of feedback we got was you chose to just watch one of them and you watched it as a family. And that's really cool. That has me super excited. And so I'm actually really, uh, I'm really energized for, uh, for this opportunity because when else have we ever had the opportunity to bring the entire school together? I mean, we're talking from kindergarten through seniors in high school in one single chapel. And I know it's not ideal doing it online. It, it really would be better if we could do this in uh, better circumstances. But given the situation, I think this is an incredible blessing that we have the opportunity to uh, take advantage of. And this is a gift that we have to worship together as one school family, regardless of what grade we're in. Uh, so this morning for our chapel, we're going to be blending a couple elements together between um, some of the things we do at the elementary school, some of the things we do at the middle school, some of the things we do at the high school, uh, all those different levels of chapel we're going to be putting together and blending them here today. So I'm really excited for it. I'll try to explain uh, some of those elements as they happen because again, these aren't things that we do at all of our chapels. Uh, some of them are a little different. Um, so I'll try to pause and explain them as we come to those points. Um, to begin with today, uh, we're going to be looking at a passage that probably a lot of you have heard a little bit of, but you might not actually be familiar with it. Uh, and that's from Lamentations chapter 3. It's a book of the Bible we rarely want to read. We hardly ever go into Lamentations. But when we do, it's probably this passage from chapter 3. So we have that to look forward to when we get to our devotion. Uh, but, but to begin with, I want to start with uh, talking about a little thing we do at the elementary school. At the elementary school chapel, we always start off with a lighting of the candles. Now, I don't have nice altar candles like we usually do. I was able, though, to find a, uh, a mason jar candle. Still has, still has a little bit of wick left to it. It's getting down there, but still has a little bit. And what we do at the beginning of our chapels at the elementary school is we always light these candles uh, at the beginning to remind us that when we come into this space together, when we worship God in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, and we gather together in that name, Jesus promised that he will be there with us. And so we light these candles because in the Bible, fire reminds us of God's presence. It's a symbol that tells us that God is here. And so what we're going to do is begin our chapel by lighting a candle and using God's name to remember that he is with us. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up our slides here in just a moment. we're going to begin our chapel. Here we go. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we light our candle, mason jar and all. And as we light the candle, we remember God's presence here with us. And so we continue with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. As I said, our Bible reading for today comes from Lamentations chapter 3, uh, beginning at verse 21. You can follow along, or if you want to read in your own Bible, uh, you can pause the video and look that up. Lamentations chapter 3, beginning at verse 21. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. 
They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul who seeks him, it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, he will have compassion, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not afflict from his heart or grieve the children of men. As I said, this is a passage of the Bible we don't usually go to. We're not super familiar with Lamentations. So let me just go ahead and say a little bit about it here. The book of Lamentations was written by the prophet Jeremiah. And Jeremiah had a very difficult task in front of him. He was called to be God's prophet and to announce God's word at a time when the people of Israel were very unfaithful. They were worshiping other gods, they were sacrificing to other idols, they were trusting in the political alliances that they had made, they were trusting in the military power that they had, rather than trusting in the power they had in praying and in sacrificing to God. Because of that unfaithfulness, and this happened over hundreds of years, God finally had to teach them a lesson. He had sent prophet after prophet after prophet telling the people, you need to clean up your act. You need to be faithful to me. You need to remember the promise I made to you. I made a covenant. That's a promise to be with you. And if you don't keep that promise to follow me, you're going to have to learn the hard way what happens when you turn away from me, when you turn away from God. And so after 800 years, 800 years, God was patient and trying to reach Israel, but they wouldn't come back to him. So he had to send a message. He took away his presence and he allowed them to experience what life was like apart from God. And that's when Jeremiah wrote the book of Lamentations. I'm going to pull up a picture here, and it's a little startling, but we're going to walk through this picture together. This is a picture of the Siege of Jerusalem, is what it's called. It's a time when Jerusalem was attacked. You see, what happened when Jeremiah was a prophet is he announced to the people that God was going to uh, take away his protection. And Jeremiah warned them if they didn't turn back to God, Jerusalem would be attacked. And sure enough, just as Jeremiah prophesied, Jerusalem was attacked. It was attacked by uh, the Babylonians. Babylon came with their army, and they destroyed the city of Jerusalem. And they took all the people there hostage, and Jerusalem, the kingdom of Israel, was enslaved. That's pretty bad. When you look at this picture, you can see that this is a very scary thing that is going on. In fact, if we look at some of the details, you can see, of course, the, the army here that is marching up to the gates. And you can see the archers have their bows drawn. You can see the spears and the shields. You can see people uh, who are, are captured, hiding. You can see a fire burning on the outside of the city walls. And in fact, even down here, there's a group of Israelites traveling out of the city. And if you look closely, you can see where they're traveling into. They're traveling into this valley of darkness. In Psalm 23, it's described as the valley of the shadow of death. All these people being led out into darkness. That's the consequences when we don't follow God, and it's very scary. Right now, we live in a time that is also very scary. We don't know what comes next. All we know is to trust God, to lean on him, when Jeremiah wrote these words, he was writing them as that was happening to Jerusalem. He was writing them when he was watching his hometown, the kingdom that he loved, fall apart. It was attacked and it was overrun by Babylon. And yet when Jeremiah saw that happening, he sat outside on a hill and he wrote the words that we just read. I want to pull that back up so we can read them again. Picture Jeremiah sitting on a hill outside of Jerusalem, watching his city being attacked and destroyed, and yet he has the courage to say, I call this to mind, 
God's love never ceases. His mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God is faithful even in what is the most scary and difficult moments. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. I don't need to trust in the government. I don't need to trust in toilet paper. I need to trust in God alone. He is my portion, so I have hope. When we trust in God, we don't have to be afraid of anything else. He's given us the victory. He proved it in his son, Jesus. The fact that Jesus came and died for us means that we have hope, no matter what happens in this world. And so Jeremiah says, the Lord is good to those who wait for him. And so we can wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Look, wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Why can we do that? Why can we trust and hope in him? Why can we wait quietly? For the Lord will not cast off forever. He will bring an end to these difficulties. He will bring an end to our grief. He will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not afflict from his heart. God doesn't enjoy watching us suffer. He doesn't enjoy watching us be afraid. He is here with us. He always has been. He always will be. A time will come when this virus, it'll go away. But God will still be here. He will not cast off forever. He will not cause grief. We don't have to be afraid because God is with us. His love, his mercy, his salvation, it never leaves us because we have Jesus. Looking at this picture one more time, you can see all of the obvious destruction, all the scary things that are happening, the people being led into the darkness. But I want to point out a few more things. I want to point out here. This is the temple. This is where, before Jesus, God's presence was gathered together and the people worshipped and they would sacrifice and they would receive forgiveness. Now, because of Jesus, we don't have to worship at any one temple. God's presence is always with us. Do you notice that here at the temple, there is still sunshine? In fact, you can even see the smoke of the sacrifice going up into the sky. Even though there's all this smoke of destruction, there is still a sacrifice being given to God. God is still forgiving sins, and the light of his presence is still there. And something else. You see, all of these people being led out into darkness, being led into the valley of the shadow of death, being led out into fear and uncertainty. But if you look just over here a little bit, you see a small group of people going a different way. And they aren't crossing into the darkness, but they are crossing through the water and coming out the other side. And that's to remind us that in our baptism, we have been tied together with Jesus. That when we wonder, is God really with me? Does God really love me? Well, when we are baptized, we have the proof. We know that Jesus is with us because we have crossed through that water and we have been washed away of all our sin. So that now we know Jesus is always with us. We are always with him. We may not feel it. We may not see it all the time. But even in the midst of all the scary things that are happening, armies taking aim, fires that are burning, disease and virus spreading across the world. There's a lot to be afraid of. But yet Jesus has given us this pathway out through the waters of baptism and into that light, that light of Christ, the light and love and mercy and salvation of God, where there is no fear. Amen. We're going to go ahead and say a prayer. Uh, this is a special prayer that usually uh, we, at the upper campus chapels, after our message, we'll have uh, some special prayers, maybe responses or things like that. Uh, so this is a special prayer written for a time of epidemic and ongoing stress. So we pray together. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, give us grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. In mercy, put an end to the COVID-19 epidemic that afflicts us all. Grant relief to those who suffer and comfort to all who mourn. 
sustain all medical personnel in their labors, and cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. During our elementary school chapels, we've been, uh, throughout the year, going through the small catechism. If you don't know what the small catechism is, it's a small book, hence the name, uh, that teaches a summary of the Bible. So when we read the small catechism, we read things like the Ten Commandments. We read about baptism. We read about forgiveness. Right now, we've been reading about the Lord's Prayer. And in fact, we are at the very end of the Lord's Prayer. So what we're going to do now is uh, read the conclusion of the Lord's Prayer. We're going to read that together, and then we're going to review what does this mean. That's the question that the Catechism asks. We read one of the commandments, and then we ask the question, what does this mean? And we have an explanation that summarizes what it means from the Bible. So we're going to go ahead and read together the conclusion of the Lord's Prayer as we continue going through the Catechism, and then we're going to answer that question, what does this mean? So we read the conclusion of the Lord's Prayer together. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So what happens if someone hears us say this prayer at the end, and at the end of it, we say these words? And they ask us, what does this mean? What can we say to them? Well, we can say this. This means that I should be certain that these petitions are pleasing to our Father in heaven and are heard by him. For he himself has commanded us to pray in this way, and he has promised to hear us. Amen, amen, means yes, yes, it shall be so. And so whenever we end our prayers with those words, amen, we are telling everyone who hears, it shall be so. Whether it's a promise we make to God or a promise God has made to us, we know that it will be so. And so we say amen. So let's go ahead and say the whole Lord's Prayer just as Jesus has taught us to pray, trusting that he is going to hold his promises and confidently saying at the end, Amen. It will be so. So we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you guys so much for taking the time today to uh, have our chapel together. I once again am so excited that we were able to have this unified chapel as a school. What an amazing opportunity. What an amazing gift and blessing. Uh, normally at this time we have, uh, at the beginning of the month, uh, which today of course is, um, we do something at the upper campus, the middle school and the high school chapels, that's called the Crusader of the Month. Uh, this is an award that we give out to students who have demonstrated great Christ-like qualities in the classroom and outside of the classroom whether it's being very diligent in their work, being very helpful to other people, um, whatever the circumstances might be, teachers and other students can nominate them for this award. Now, normally we have uh, a winner for every of our middle school grades, and we have a couple winners uh, for our high school grades as well. Uh, but I think it's appropriate, and I think we all would agree that this month, uh, we have a whole lot of Crusaders of the Month. In fact, I think we can say confidently that you watching this right now, you are the Crusader of the Month. Uh, all of you students, you have been amazing at this transition to online school. This is a really difficult thing that you're being asked to do, and yet you are being so good at continuing uh, to stay on top of your work. You're still learning. You're still doing everything that you're being asked. That's amazing. Uh, and so from all of us, all of your teachers, all of uh, uh, your, your classroom teachers, and all the staff and your principals, um, and from me as well, you guys are absolutely the Crusader of the Month. So even though we don't normally give it out at the elementary school even, hey, you earned it. You are the Crusader of the Month this week. Uh, so congratulations to you, and 
I'm so glad we had this opportunity together to have a chapel that worship as a whole school. Uh, I pray that this continues to be a blessing and an encouragement to you. As always, if you have any comments or questions on uh, anything that was talked about in chapel today, feel free to comment them on this video below. Uh, you also can always email me, reach out. Um, I'm just at eSpira at thehcla.org. You're welcome to get in contact with me, with um, Pastor Chris, Pastor Matt, Pastor Paul, any of our uh, teachers and staff here at the academy and at the church. We're here for you guys. This is a difficult time. We know that. Uh, and so whether you have issues with stuff happening in the classroom or things happening at home, things you want prayed for, feel free to reach out. We are absolutely here for you. So we're at the end of our chapel time. Uh, and it looks like we have just a tiny little bit. You can barely see the flame down there, but it's still going. Uh, God's presence is good. He is with us. So we're going to go ahead and blow out our candle as a reminder that our chapel time is at an end. Uh, so hopefully uh, you guys continue to wash your hands, read your Bibles, keep trusting in the Lord. He is good. He is faithful. His mercy never comes to an end. His salvation is here for us in Jesus. We have nothing to be afraid of. So let's keep praying and trusting in him. And we'll see you guys later this week. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. Go in peace and serve the Lord.